Hey guys, and welcome to episode 2 of the Sprinter Turbo Upgrade. Yes, it is the 8th of May. Yes, it is in fact snowing. But I'm really excited about um, working on this vehicle because I finally got my turbo back from Turbo Parts Canada. Basically, what I want to do today is I want to mount the hybrid GT23 hybrid turbo on the vehicle, take it around, do another 0 to 100 or 0 to 60 uh, if you're down south of the border to see if there's any changes in the performance. And uh, while I'm logging as well the, uh, the map and the map values for the car. And I also have the four bar Mercedes map sensor that I wanna throw on. So that's gonna be the sort of step, second step for, for today. And once I have logged in the data from, uh, from both pools, I'm gonna send it out to my, uh, to my tuner to see if he uh, needs to do any modifications. Now, at the same time, I actually have the OM628 uh, high pressure fuel pump of a V8 CDI from Europe. It's on the way right now. So today, episode two, we're gonna stop with the turbos. In episode three, I'm gonna throw in the pump and that's kind of where I'm going to stop with the stage two uh, upgrade of the Sprinter. Um, once we have dialed in the tune, the next step will be to get a bigger intercooler, perhaps uh, a new exhaust, get a three inch exhaust all the way back, get rid of any restrictions that we have in the uh, sort of airflow of the, of the system. And um, potentially, once all of that's sorted out, uh, as you saw in the previous episode, I wanted to go uh, to a Westgate turbo. So I'm going to try and throw the hosted HE300 um, upgrade, get the map deleted, convert from VNT to Westgate, it, and, and, and that's it. That's where we're going to cap this project. I, I have no desire to, to hit uh, 400 horsepower with it, and I don't think we're going to be able to with these injectors anyways. So that's, that's where the project stands right now. Let's go take a look at very quickly at the turbo. It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, Turbo Parts Canada did a fantastic job with it. I did lose two, um, two stock GT22 turbos in the process, but they were both high mileage. So I'm not, uh, I'm not too, too worried about it. I do have the 648, the GT23 turbo. That's actually rebuilt uh, stock, ready to go. So I'm gonna put that up for sale. That'll be, uh, that'll recuperate some of the cash and we'll throw the turbo on and we'll go do some pulls. All right, stay tuned. All right, let's, uh, let's have a look at the turbo here. So we started off with the OM647 stock housing last time. Um, this is about a 44, uh, 40 millimeter stock GT22 compressor. Now, last time, as you saw, what I tried to do is I tried to mount the GT23 unit with a machined GT22 compressor housing. So basically bored out to match the turbo profile. That didn't work. So what I've done, is I've basically given my GT22 Turbo to Turbo Parts Canada for them to get a bigger compressor wheel. Now, I got a call from Nick who quickly explained to me that the stock shaft for the GT22 unit was actually bent. Age during the, the disassembly doesn't really matter. The point is that he needed to buy a new shaft. At the same time, he was looking to rebuild the turbo. So actually what made a lot more sense to me is to get a new CHRA instead of rebuilding the turbo and buying a new shaft, just buy the whole thing together and mount a bigger wheel on it. So as a result, he's gone and done just that. So that's that's the turbo that we've got right now. So this is a GT22, GT23 hybrid unit with a GT22 back end, brand new CHRA, um, a machined GT22 compressor housing and a GT23 uh, compressor wheel. So this is a 44 and a bit, I think it's 44 and a half millimeter compressor wheel compared to the stock 40 millimeter compressor wheel. As you can see, it's, it's an absolutely gorgeous unit. I think the guys have done a fantastic job of uh, cleaning it up, getting it uh, painted up, getting the new CHRA in there and, you know, getting everything balanced out. So we'll mount it, prime it, take it for a spin, do a log and go from there. Everything's still looking good. There's no leaks or anything like that. As for the map sensor, that's where it goes right there. That's the original uh, unit. So I'm gonna swap in this one real quick. 
and we'll go for another drive. Here we go. So this is the new four bar map installed right there. So I don't, I don't think this is gonna work. There shouldn't be any performance increase before the files adjusted. But what I'd like to know is if the van's actually drivable with the four bar map. So obviously the calibration table is gonna be different. Well, let's have a look. Let's, uh, I'll do a quick spin around the neighborhood. I'll log that. And if there's no codes or anything, I'll go do another wide open throttle and we'll compare the, uh, the boost reported by the system between the two sensors. So I can tell you right away, uh, I don't really have any power. And judging from the readings on, on the sensor, there's very, yeah. So the, the boost it's reading right now is actually very low. Um, my guess is from the change in the engine sound when I fired it up is that the, the VNT actuator is compensating for the readings of the map sensor. So this will have to be uh, obviously adjusted. This is very, uh, very slow acceleration. Now it's not throwing a code. It's not going into limp mode either. Uh, is just reading very, uh, very low boost. Yeah. So we'll, we'll compare that. There's wide open throttle there. There's barely anything going on. Okay, so obviously we're not gonna be able to drive with this sensor. Uh, until it is calibrated. Now, uh, in the interest of uh, saving time, I'm probably gonna just do one file for the four bar and the four OM628 uh, pump. And then I'm going to do uh, both of those uh, wide open pulls in uh, the third part. So, for now, uh, we've got a turbo that runs well. Um, I'm gonna have a look at the logs and um, it, the car certainly feels great right off uh, right off the line. Um, the four bar does not work without calibration, which was expected. I did not uh, really think that it was going to do much in terms of performance. So um, we'll take a quick look at the files. Um, I'll try and do that tonight, and uh, that will be it for this for this upgrade. After that, uh, we're going to throw on the pump, like I said, retune and uh, finish off this project all right so let's have a look at those log files we have the stock gt22 uh, turbo versus the gt23 hybrid hybrid unit on the rpm side not much of a difference between the two pools this is 0 to 100 uh, wide open throttle pool so first gear second gear third gear going into fourth um, the two um, runs pretty much map right on top of each other a little bit different on the map side as you can see the 23 hybrid does peak a bit higher and it has a much smoother boost curve i do believe that's a result of the vnt actuation uh, i'd be curious to see what my uh, tuner says about this if anybody has other ideas please do uh, post them below now on the math side i was a little surprised to see uh, a bit of a delay here in the values for the map now the the air flow for the for the hybrid turbo does peak above the uh, stock unit and as you can see getting into third gear heading up to 100 kilometers an hour it kind of follows about the same curve so the two turbos more or less flow the same at that point but um, i am very curious about the delay here so i didn't see a delay in the map graph as you can see the pressure pretty much builds up right away so i'm just curious as to why the 23 hybrid does come up slower with the airflow and when that's something we can be fixed that can be fixed in the tune um, as i promised two more graphs i just uh, mapped the intake air temperature um, for the to, to kind of have a look at what the intercooler is doing uh, the ambient temperature at the time was about uh, 10 12 degrees um, so you can see the temperature is obviously climbing but it sort of seems to uh, to flatten out there and very quickly, as you saw uh, just just before the logs here, um, when I put the four bar map sensor, uh, the performance of the engine more or less died. This uh, the log shows you why the map sensor is not really doing anything useful for the engine uh, control unit, um, as is displaying uh, negative values for the 
the map. So that explains it. Obviously, we need a retune uh, that takes uh, that calibrates for this uh, sensor, and that's going to come in part three with the OM628 high pressure fuel pump. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this useful, please do subscribe, uh, like the video, uh, leave any comments behind. I'm definitely uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say about uh, what these curves look like and whether there's something you want me to uh, log separately. The 23 hybrid is on the car now, so I can do other uh, other logging and do more pulls if, uh, if anybody uh, wants me to get more data. But for now, this is it. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for part three.